let's talk about this class. Um, I, I thought I, I stumbled onto your scouting combine, post combine quarterback rankings article on rotoworld.com. And I, and I loved it. I thought you did a great job. I, I just want, and, and then I saw your contact there at the bottom and I said, all right, we got to try to see if we can get Eric on the show. You have Bryce Young as your QB one. Um, he's awfully small. Um, I don't know if he's six feet tall. I don't know if he's 200 pounds. Um, but I've heard Daniel Jeremiah compare him to Aaron Rodgers. I always have, you know, you talk about evaluating quarterbacks. It's difficult to evaluate quarterbacks anyway. It's even more difficult in my mind to evaluate quarterbacks on truly dominant teams. How, how do you, how do you, you know, give me your grade on Bryce Young, what you see with Young as he tries to pro- progress to the next level. He's, I don't know if there's a comp for him because he's, he's diminutive, but man, he's been really electric. Yeah. Oh, it, there's no doubt in terms of if you watch his film and just the, the, his body of work at Alabama and through the, you know, these last two years where he's been starting, I mean, he came out of high school as a five-star blue chip, no doubt consensus five-star elite, elite quarterback prospect. So even though he isn't, you know, the stature of the aforementioned Trevor Lawrence, look, it, it isn't like he didn't have this talent. It's not like it wasn't, we didn't see it at a young age from an evaluation standpoint. Like he did this, from you know, a very young age, he didn't just come on the scene. All right. So this was a, you know, rite of passage. It was a, a process bringing him here. And it's not like he's coming out of nowhere. Right. That being said, uh, I did interview him at the elite 11 at Redondo beach high school this summer. I stood face to face. I'm six, two and a half, 205 pounds. And I stood face to face with him. And I didn't feel like I'm looking at somebody who is going to be, you know, absolutely destroyed right out of the gate in the NFL. Is he prototypical size? You know, no, of course. Was Drew Brees? No. And I think in today's day and age where the ability to deliver accurate strikes to be able to read defenses he can definitely do that you see him going through the progression you see his creativity he comes from different arm angles as well um just in terms of the complete package he's there and and it goes to obviously pressure as well and that's what i talked about being a real important factor for me and he was second nationally in terms of his pff pressure grade in this class with uh the number one being clayton toon for houston who is a guy I really love and I had all over my college fantasy football teams over the past couple of years. So, um, you know, third down situations as well. You know, he's number one overall uh, in terms of being able to hit the tight windows when teams know you're passing. That's another thing. I really like seeing how quarterbacks perform on third downs, you know, because the be, having – uh, you know, good play action numbers, having your things disguised by play action is one thing. But when the other team knows that you're dropping back, you have to pass. You are going to be throwing. They're coming and bringing heat, um, you know, off the edge and up the middle. That's I, I want to see quarterbacks perform in those circumstances. And he does time after time. So even though I, I really feel like the only thing you can really say about him that's a, a real knock outside of, you know, little things is just his size. And if that's all you really have, you know, I didn't see him as being, you know, five foot six or anything, you know, he's still around that five eleven to six foot range. And at 21 and a half years old, I, I do think that there's room for him to put on 10 pounds. I mean, you know, how, how much is, is up for debate, but um, I do think that he, he does have the ability to be able to sustain, uh, you know, the rigors of an NFL season. He's not somebody who just wantonly runs either. He's very selective about uh, picking his spots there. So he's he's smart about uh, when he takes his chances. And I just wish that NBC, uh, with the video accompanying that uh, that article, didn't put Matthew Berry talking about how small Bryce Young was. Uh, <laughs> my article. So it was like, uh, yeah. what? what? That's the, that's the video we pick guys. Okay. Fair enough. But here's my question. 
can Bryce Young in the NFL with the wider hash marks throw the deep out with zip and get it there? That's my, that's my, I guess, does he have enough arm strength to stand there in the pocket and, and make that, that, you know, that hard deep out throw, which is, or can he throw the deep cut patterns, the 18 to 22 yard ins and outs? Um, that would be my big concern. Where are you with the requisite arm strength? Does he have it? Yeah, I mean, it's it's not a howitzer, obviously, you know, like it, there's there are certain limitations unless you're, you know, you don't see a lot of guys in Major League Baseball that are 5'11", 195 pounds, you know, like the, the ballpark we're talking about, that are throwing 98 miles an hour. It, Pedro Martinez was one of a kind, you know, it's, it's Pedro and then there aren't a lot of guys that are pretty much out there doing that. So, um you know, there are certain just natural limitations you're going to have, but I I think he's got plenty of juice to be able to make throws he needs to, you know, like you said, the 20, the 20 yard field side out, which is a a real test of any quarterback in the NFL level. Are you going to be able to beat an an NFL uh, cornerback to that, that field side uh, downfield? And, and that's something where we will have to watch, but I think he can do it. And in this season too, with Bryce, he speaking of the all time great wide receiver cores, you know, he he lost a lot of talent for to that 2021 draft, as we saw. Jameson Williams, yeah, you know, uh obviously, uh, and then you get to John Mechie. Unfortunately, he had cancer and didn't play much for Houston, but he was an early third round selection as well. So and then Slade Bolden, a nice quality, dependable slot receiver. It all worked nicely together, that whole thing. And then he comes in this year, and it's a whole new group. It's a whole new group. You got Jermaine Burton transferring in from Georgia. He's kind of more of a deep threat. Is it, you know, not a complete receiver, um, not somebody who can work the the inside the way that Mechie did, who was working the underneath. Uh, and then Jameson Williams just taking the top off creating separation both with the ball in the air, you know, off the break and with the ball in his hands, you know, at will at six, three, 200 pounds. It's like, you got your Corey Brooks. Now he doesn't have that, that step. He's big, you know, and he made some nice plays with some drops and he doesn't have the high end gear you saw from Jameson Williams. And on the other side, like you said, you're you're breaking in like five new highly touted freshmen outside of those two guys who haven't proven themselves yet at, the uh in the sec a lot of moving parts really uh was a challenge for bryce young this year and that's why you didn't see death star bama um so i do think that has to be you know factored into his grade if you look at his 2021 stuff a little more you see that he was he was dialing it downfield you just had receivers getting more separation 